Senator Van Hollen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank both of you for your testimony and for your service. Uh, and I agree with the comments uh, that have been made by my colleagues um, regarding the importance of security assistance uh, to U.S. interests, national security interests, as well as that of our partners. In fact, back in the 1980s, I served a short stint, sort of an extended internship at the Pentagon in what was then called the Defense Security Assistance Agency. And my job was to write the justifications that came to Congress for various security assistance programs. So um, I understand the importance. I also, from that experience, realized that when I started for the next, next fiscal year justification, I just took the previous year justification and made some edits. And so part of the lesson there, though, is something the chairman's breaking, bringing up, which is we get in these ruts. I mean, it's very easy just to continue in the same course that you're already on. And we do need to step back and reevaluate lots of these uh, issues. Uh, you would both agree, I believe, that it's not in our security interest when a recipient of U.S. weapons or other forms of security assistance uses them as a tool of repression or to crack down on human rights. Would, would you both agree with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So to pick up on Senator Murphy's question on end use and taking credible allegations of violations of end use requirements seriously. Can each of you give us a recent example of, an, of pursuing a credible report uh, of a violation of what we thought was an end use uh, requirement? So I think that there are um, there are two ways to look at this. Um, there is the, the a violation of end use, meaning um, when um, the the intended recipient is not the one who is who is doing it. And um, and uh, uh, Senator Murphy um, mentioned mentioned one of those um, those cases. Then there is the um, the misuse of, um, of of U.S. origin equipment, and um, you will you will understand that um, that 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 is the consideration that we used when we decided to suspend the two munition sales um, to Saudi Arabia, that we saw that we, we did a risk assessment, and that is what we're, we, are, we are implementing now. We are, um, we are implementing risk assessments for each of these transfers on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, and we, our risk assessment told us that those munitions could be used, um, more likely than not, to be used um, to result in civilian harm. And so that is why we suspended those, uh, those two munition sales. Thank you. Now, there's also the Leahy Law, and that's a different set of requirements. Um, could you speak, and I, let me ask you this, when you get credible reports of violation of the Leahy Laws, do you also pursue those, investigate those? Yes, we do that with um, with our partners um, uh, at the embassies. We also do that with the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor. And the Defense Department oversees a different, sometimes different sets of programs, but do you also uh, pursue credible reports of violations of Leahy Law? Absolutely. When I see them, whether it comes from outside communities, press, social media, or reports that come directly to me, I make a point of asking my staff to work with the different implementing agencies and in the field to investigate, raise it directly, and then I raise it myself. Okay. And have... Either of you received credible reports of violation of the Leahy laws since you've been in your positions? Um, we have several different um, threads of, that, that, uh, that we are looking into. Um, I don't think that we have made any determinations at this point. Um, and when we do, um, or if we do, then we would come to Congress. Okay. So if you find there's been a violation of a Leahy law, you would inform the Congress. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And can you also provide the Congress with the results of your investigations into violations of the Leahy Law, even if you don't make a determination? Uh, as you can imagine, there are going to be cases where uh, different people could reach different conclusions. Would you have any objection with sharing your investigation in the credible reports uh, of the Leahy Law with the Congress? We always make sure to, um, to engage with Congress on, on these issues. Okay. I, I would just ask, uh, in closing, Mr. Chairman, if, if you could provide um, us uh, with uh, your 
you know, any investigations of Leahy law violations that you've pursued within the last year. That would be, or the last, since January. Would that be okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, great. Uh, Senator Young. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I'm going to go a bit off script. I know we're discussing foreign arms sales right now, but uh, 